Hello and welcome to the very first special Patreon video. It's a short film uh, looking at um, a restoration in a little bit more detail. Um, I really do hope you enjoy it and it gives you some idea of the work I do in the museum. This is a relatively small job um, and it is a weevil from Torchwood. Now, what you're going to see is, um, in the introduction, you'll see two masks um, and I had both offered to me to restore. Um, the person who brought them to me wanted to basically pay me to do both masks, but I really, um, let's, it's kind of like, I can't really charge the amount of money it takes in time to do them and make it worthwhile. However, it was quite clear that he would pay, be quite happy in payment to um, allow me to keep one of the masks. So that was more tempting because I thought, oh, this is a chance to have a nice piece in the museum. Um, and the thing with the, the weevil masks were, um, as, as much as I've said before, I'm not a massive Torchwood fan. Um, what I am is a monster fan and the, the weevil's a great design. It really is a great design. So I hope you enjoy this little movie. Um, it takes you through the process of deciding which mask to keep. In a nutshell, the one I decided to keep was the most difficult one to do. In many ways, it's the hero mask. In other words, it's the one you saw in close-ups, but it was also the most damaged. And I wanted to get the other mask back um, to the guy who was who wanted it as quickly as possible. So, and it still took me, I did it over probably about two months in total, on and off, um, to get done, because I was doing loads of other stuff, like writing magazines and teaching and all sorts. But I hope you enjoy it. And this is a real thank you video. and. Um, especially exclusive for patrons and um, I'm incredibly grateful. Anyway, hope you enjoy it and look forward to your feedback. All right, see you soon. I've just opened the heads. We have some issues. Nothing I can't, nothing that's not sort outable, but number one, you've got two different heads. You have got one in really good condition, which is this one here. This is in excellent condition. It's got some dropout in the foam. Um, it's also very floppy. So ideally I'd need to, to start sculpting on it. What I'd want to do, and I say sculpting, just enough so I can press in and repair these areas. Um, Ideally, you want a head under it, some sort of plastic head that isn't going to deteriorate. I would be very much wanting to put preferably some clay, no, sorry, some um, resin or some PVA resin, something like that inside and sealing as much of it as I could. Getting it a bit firmer and then just tidy these bits up. So that's head one. Now, it's not animatronic, but it is in pretty good nick. Um, or the te teeth resin, yes, the te oh, teeth are hard rubber, I'd say. So that's mask one. Mask two. Wowza. Oh boy, this is the animatronic one, but it's heaps of fun for me. It's what I class as a crumbly. It's really, really fragile. The neck's gone, okay? The back of the skull's gone with a lot of hair, and 
it's got the underskull in it's heavy but you know you're never going to touch those animatronic cables and if you do there's no cables i can see but if you you know you're not going to now the side of this face i have done work like this i've got a morlock from the time machine very similar i don't know if you can see that the jaw's gone and it's a serious look at all this it this is what i class as a project this isn't weeks of you see look, look on the back there it's the other side this is not weeks of work for me this is on and off over a few months it's a bit like doing a mess store job where i'm going to have to um oh where i'm going to have to seriously look it's crumbling away there i am going to have to sit and work on this bad boy the eyebrow there has gone i think what i should be doing is i should probably keep this one that one's easier for me to do um i know it's time to trying this one but oh my god um it's obviously been heavily used and heavily abused and it's obviously flexed and flexed I mean, the neck is gone i am prepared to sculpt a new neck in but that's not going to be an original neck you see there's just no neck there i'll do this because it's the sort of thing i enjoy doing so you can see the difference there it's a bit like the Terraleptal I had this one. Um, so there you go. Right, getting started on the Weevil. The most important thing with a mask like this is to stop it moving around and get it stable. So first of all, I lashed up a quick uh, mannequin head on a base. And then I needed to fix the head to it. And then start to get the underneath of it rigid and seal the underside. Because what you don't want is air getting into there and it drying out more and it crumbling away from the inside out very carefully building up layers if you can hear that you've got this stuff is very soft now the back of your mask here is not so not too bad at all actually but it's beginning to go you can see how it's coming away there so i'm going to just continue around here now i'm going to put a bit on now and this now is lovely it's really worked well i'm delighted actually and it means that this is firm You've got a backing so i can just gently apply some very gentle clay air dry clay into there and start repairing so i'm really pleased how this is going i'm going to put a little bit you've got a bit of flex here in the neck i don't know if you can see that there you go you see that joint that's going to stop you see it's cracking there so we're going to i'm going to put a little bit of foam just a line of foam in there to firm that because what you don't want these things to do is to flex you want them to not flex anymore hey look at that all nicely under sealed Nice, neat job. Looking good. With the plaster bandage um, hardened, it meant that now I actually could sculpt and repair the outside surface of the mask. So before that, it was far too floppy, so you just couldn't have put any weight or purchase on it. So the nice thing is the plaster bandage with the PVA is really dried hard, so now I can actually work on that, that surface. And there's two sorts of damage on this mask. One is where just chunk, it's obviously being stored with another um, rubber mask. And what happens with these things is that um, over time, the, the rubber starts to get sticky. And obviously two masks have stuck together and chunks of this mask have got stuck on the other mask. And then little bits of the other mask have got stuck on this one. Now the latter, where you've got a bit of rubber now stuck to the surface, are, it, that's actually very difficult to do very much with. Really, it's a question of trying to just cut it off a little bit and then paint over. The holes are much more easy to deal with, and so it's about getting clay and very carefully getting the clay in and then trying to smooth the edges down as best you can, and that's why you've got to have that firm surface to work on. And then after that, it's just trying to texture the, the the clay surface to match the surround and that's a you know adding fine lines and sort of skin pores and it's just very very fine careful work getting ready to do the repairs now on the top of the head and the eye there put a little bit of foam in behind the eye just to give me something firm to sculpt against otherwise it was just too floppy and we don't want that rubber moving any more now than it should and likewise some little bits and pieces here but the neck areas I've sculpted in are quite nice, I think. Need to blend them with paint now. A nasty chunk out this jaw here should fill nicely. So I'm going to just toughen them up with some PVA. And and where you've got bits of sort of holes in the foam, I'm just filling those in with this watery PVA, which will sort of hydrate the dusty bits again. Let some water get in. 
but also then as it dries will sort of act as a plastic seal and with this foam now behind that area there that's going to stop that waggling around and then I can start sculpting on top of that it's a fine line with foam as I've learned to my cost over the years because you put too much in it'll swell the side of the face out which is not good so you get a kind of feel for what's too much and what isn't I think that's that's pretty good now I'm gonna to have to tidy up the eye around the eye edge but that's okay okay I've been patching in some big holes and basically until it's painted it's all gonna look a bit odd I'm gonna try to texture it a little bit quite tricky actually but anyway most of the big holes in fact all the big holes are gone now and it is coming on now very much and we'll soon be able to paint just get those eyes dig the foam out around the eyes as you can see I put some foam in the head and especially around the sort of cheeks and eyes just to give it um, some stability because it's a, a classic place where the rubber wears away so I needed to get something inside <clears throat> a little bit of mess around it which I'm tidying up but that's what it looks like and I've carved out and it's quite firm now which means it, it's supported from behind so then if I move this mask around here's what the next stage which I've done on this side and what I've done here is I sculpted in sort of a, a false eye socket there you go so it's now got sort of a nice socket in there which I'll paint black in there and if you want to put a glass eye in at a later time you probably could but basically it should look quite nice so I've tidied up the edges again I'll not colour match that and if I just turn this around there you go I've sculpted in the other side just giving it some shape in there just to take away that it's just a, a hole in the rubber so that should paint up now pretty nice I'm looking forward to doing that so here is the mask ready for some painting I can't wait well I can't. I'm dreading it because color matching is a pig and um, everything's brown ish a kind of brown okay exciting times because it's painting time for the weevil so a little bit of before and after now i'm trying to paint here one hand just to show you if i've got it it's a very difficult mix this color because it's it's sort of um i'll find I just generally find touching these things, painting these things in is quite difficult. You've got to sort of blend a little. You're oscillating between red and yellow hues, and um, blacks and whites, and these sort of tonal values, which are quite. And also, the lights you're working under are quite tricky too, because often a bulb's got a touch of yellow in it, or stuff like that. It's just. I, once I get into it, I really enjoy it, but the the run up to it can be quite traumatic. Not traumatic, but it can be. Um, I get stressed about it because I don't want to make a mess of things. But you're just trying to blend things in as best you can. Um, and there's no roadmap for this sort of work. You've just got to have a you just have a go. And I remember somebody said, "Oh, can you do something for me in like two weeks?" Oh, it's two. It's two. Sorry, two days work. And I thought, "No, oh, bloody well, isn't two days work?" You know. Um, but hopefully you can see those little patches are beginning to vanish so as I fill this in. Okay, so some of the paint is now drying in, but the one thing I've noticed is there was some damage on the eye and I'm not happy with how it's coming on. So there was damage to the latex here and here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a touch of clay over the top just to smooth it out and then repaint that. Right, here we are. Following my disappointment with the eye areas, I've now re-sculpted the eyes. I say re-sculpted, coated them to get rid of the bumps and lumps. So I'm now going to be able to repaint those eyes, hopefully, and make them look a heck of a lot better. Well, I am finished the sculpting and painting aspect of the restoration now just need to put a, a blender top coat in and sort of preservative and sealant to stop it 
further deteriorating over the years then mat it all down so it all blends in a bit better because there's a discrepancy between the sort of matte finish of the um you know the matte finish of the original with the extra bits i've added on but i'm really quite pleased with that what i'm going to do today get the sander tidy up this frame but pretty well done just going to sort of match in the surface so that it all blends together um, and you can't see the difference and then mat it all down and that hopefully is a one restored weevil 